Right. Okay, when we first started this study, it was back in 2004. At that time, um, patients had just started clinical trials with DGFR-targeted antibodies. You can see here two of them, cetuximab and panitumumab in colorectal cancer. And we did have a particular um, response. We could see patient respond, about 10 to 15 percent of patients responding to these treatments, really remarkable shrinkage of their liver metastasis, while their remaining were not benefiting. We started a translational oncology program to go along with it. And within this program, we concentrated at the beginning with the, um, to EGFR mutations, amplification, increased gene copy number, and subsequently to um, downstream effectors of the EGFR signaling pathways. You can see here in this slide, we have a number of effectors of the EGFR itself. What, was, what became evident a couple of years afterwards was that mutations in, K, in the oncogene KRAS would bypass the inhibitory effect of cetuximab and panitumumab, thus resulting in restoring the proliferative effect of this signaling cascade. However, if you look at the numbers, you can see that KRAS mutations only justify uh, for 35 to 45 percent of patients not responding to these treatments. Therefore, the quest for other um, molecular biomarkers of response to these treatments is still open. What we did in this study is we looked at other effectors of the EGFR signaling pathway. In particular, we looked at uh, BRAF, pi 3 kinase, and P10. If you go back to the first slide, they are all downstream, the KRAS. And we found that there was an overlapping of genetic al molecular alterations. You can see here the number of patients. You can see that, for example, why KRAS and BRAF do not overlap. Loss of P10 or pi 3 kinase genetic mutations do overlap with the two. So the, this, this really reflects the complexity of cancer. What we did is we did a multivariate, univariate analysis. You will hear about that tomorrow. Um, but overall, the most striking effect was when you were just counting the number of alterations. Um, if you look at the patients who did respond to treatment, you can see that the vast majority of them did not have alterations in any of these four markers, with the exception of a few outliers that I've got here. Uh, on the other side, if you take uh, the non-responders, then oops, you can look, you can see that the majority of them had one molecular marker altered, and a significant fraction, about a quarter of them, had two altered genes. This was even more striking when I put the data together and looked at um, prognosis of these patients. In fact, you can, look, you, can, you can see that just looking at the number of genetic and molecular alterations, you can stratify patients in three survival categories. Patients with no alterations in these four markers that are treated with EGFR-targeted therapies are doing much better than patients with one compared to patients with two that have the worst outcome. The take-home message of all this is that if you take the four biomarkers together, then we can identify up to 70, 75% of patients not responding to EGFR-targeted therapies. And we believe this is a major improvement um, compared to current practice. <laughs>